Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. We're going to continue on our series. This is part four of how sin affects us and what can we do about it. So we're going to focus on when we humble ourselves, we need to confess and repent of our sins. When we do that, God shows us mercy. So when we humble ourselves, confess and repent of our sins, God shows us mercy. Proverbs chapter 8, 28, verse 13, uh, show us this. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Psalms 32, verses 3 through 5, NIV states, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sap as in the heat of summer. Did I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity? So here David is letting us know from his experience the importance of confessing and repenting of our sins. He's letting us know the danger, the hurt and pain that comes with sinning and concealing it, keeping it a secret, trying to hide, it from, trying to hide our sin from God. It's impossible for us to hide our sin from the all-knowing God. So it's best to confess, to repent of our sins. <clears throat> Psalm 32, Psalm chapter 25, verse 16 through 18 states, Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. For troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. Look on my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Here, David is crying out to God, asking God to have mercy on him, to forgive him of his sins. We need to, that's what our prayer need to be. We need to ask God to have mercy on us and ask God to forgive us of our sins. Psalm chapter 40, verse 11 through 13. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fails me. Please be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. So again, we got another example. David cried out to God, asking God for mercy, asking God for help. We need to do such a thing. We are also guilty of sin. We need to continually to go before God, our Holy Father, and ask him to show us mercy and ask him to forgive us of our sins. Here, uh, David is uh, showing how he says, how his sin, his, my, he said, my iniquities have overtaken me. Another word for iniquity, sin. He said, my sins have overtaken me. He said, my sins are weighing me down so much, he said, I'm not even able to look up. He said, yeah, my sins are more than the hair on my head. He said, my, therefore, my heart fails me because it was his sin. Sins, when we sin, it causes us to go through pain and suffering. There are curses that come with sinning. So uh, David recognized that and David knew where his help came from. He knew it came from the, 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 the maker of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ. The one and only God, God of Abraham, Elohim, Rapha, Omega. He knew where his help came from. And that's who we call out to. And he asked God to help me, Lord God, quickly come in haste and help me. Leviticus chapter 26, 40 through 46. Uh, the word of God says, but at last my people will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors for betraying me and being hostile towards me. When I have turned their hostility back on them and brought them to the land of their enemies, then at last their stubborn hearts will be humble and they will pay for their sins. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham and I will remember the land. Let's continue at 43b. At last that the people will pay for their sins, for they have continually rejected my regulation and despised my decrees. But despite all this, I will not utterly reject or despise them while they are in exile in the land of their enemies. 
I will not cancel my covenant with them by wiping them out, for I am the Lord their God. For their sakes, I will remember my ancient covenant with their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of all the nations, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, regulation, and instruction that the Lord gave through Moses on Mount Sinai as evidence of the relationship between himself and the Israelites. God expect us to humble ourselves before him, to confess and repent of our sins, just like he did with the Jews, the Israelites, in the Old Testament. It was, it's the same requirement today. And when we choose sin, when we choose to, to stubborn, they have a stubborn heart towards God, when we choose to be hostile toward God, in other words, when we choose sin to continue to uh, 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 continue our sinful behavior, we choose to turn against God, we choose to be hostile towards him, and there's consequences for that. We, we, we choose to not to cry out to him and ask him for help and ask him to show us mercy. There's consequences for that. And so the God's people, the Jews in the Old Testament here in uh, Leviticus chapter 26, they had to deal with the consequences for their sins. They had to deal with the consequences of their pride of being hostile towards God. And they did. And they, they got to, when as they went through their pain and suffering, they got to the point where they did humble themselves before God. They did repent. They did ask God for mercy. And God heard their cry. And God said, despite everything they did, they, they disobeyed him, they turned against him, they, they, they dishonored him. God said, he still, he was willing, willing to uh, 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 show them mercy and show them love. To remember the covenant he made with their forefathers. God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. He's, he's a kind God. He let us know what he wants from us. There's no secret. The Holy Bible. All you have to do is read it. You want to know what God wants from you, what he expects? Read the Holy Bible. It's there. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31 says, The Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon you, destroy you, or forget the promise to your ancestors that he swore he would keep. He, God, is still the same merciful God. We, who are Gentiles, still, that, that, that promise God made to uh, to the Israelites, to the Jews, it still stands for us too, to show us mercy. Because we have been adopted. God adopted us, what we can call him our Father. He adopted us when we chose him, when we as Christians choose him as our Lord and Savior. We, we, he adopted us, what we can call him our Father. John, second John chapter one, verse three says, grace and mercy and peace, which comes from God, the father and from Jesus Christ, the son of the father will continue to be with, with us who live in truth and love. We who are Christian, who accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and savior with the word of God, let us know that grace and mercy and peace, which comes from God, the father and from Jesus Christ, the son of the father will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. So we who live in truth and love, we who are Christians, we will continue to find God grace, mercy, and peace. But yes, we do need to confess. We do need to repent. We do need to ask God, cry to God just like David did and ask God to show us mercy. We need to continue to cry to God, continue to confess and repent and ask for mercy. It's not a one. It's something we do one time because we don't sin one time. Not something we do two times, because we don't just sin two times. It's something we do continually on a regular basis. Because we all have sinned and come short of his glory. We sin and come short of his glory still. As Christians, we still do. Whether we lie, complain, gossip, whether we get to have sexual morality, gambling. Anger, bitterness, resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, lying, stealing. We still need God's grace and mercy. Whether we get to self-righteousness, using God's name in vain, whatever we get to, 
allowing ourselves to see evenness or participate in evenness or hear evenness, we need to confess and repent and ask God to show us mercy on a regular basis. John chapter 11, verse 25 through 26a states in the NIV, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have, we, who stay on that path, continue to stay on the path of righteousness for the rest of our days living on this earth. We stay on that path of righteousness. That doesn't mean we may, we may, as we on this path of righteousness, we may stumble sometimes. We may fall, we, but we get, we get back up and we continue to race. See, if, if, you, if you stumble, it's about getting back up and continue to race in Christ. But if you stumble and you fall and you stay down and you, you, you discontinue the race in Christ, then you, you uh, did not stay true and stay on the path of righteousness in Christ. So that promise of eternal life is not for you because you didn't stay on the path of righteousness in Christ. But for those of us who continue that path of righteousness, to continue to stay on the path of righteousness in Christ Jesus. So in other words, we are Christian. We, we love Jesus Christ. We accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We confess and repent of our sins. We believe in his heart that he, he died and rose again. We trusted and depended on him. We have our faith in Jesus Christ. We, we desire to do his will. We desire to do the work he called, he called us to do. And we're on that path to, to, to obey his commands and to live a life for him. We are the ones who, even though we die in this mortal body, we will live forever in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 6 states, But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. Not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us rich, richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. See, the only way we can, we can receive eternal life where, there, and where there's no pain, there's no sorrow, there's no suffering is to receive it, eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. There's no other option. It's just through Jesus Christ. So we want to avoid the ultimate punishment, which is going to hell, or which will lead to the lake of fire, the second death. We have to make a choice of choosing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. A choice of choosing, choosing his free gift for salvation. Because we receive this free gift of salvation, not by our deeds, not by our works of righteousness, not by the good that we have done. We receive it out of God's love and his grace and his mercy. He gives us, give it to us. It's a free gift that's open up to every human being. Every human being has that choice to make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. God is a righteous judge, a just judge. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 11 through 12 shows us this. This is the NASB. Let the sea roar and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. God is a righteous judge. He's going to judge the world with righteousness. Ezra chapter 9 verse 13 states, What has happened to us is a result of our evil deeds and our great guilt. And yet our God, you have punished us less than our sins deserve and has given us a remnant like this. God is a righteous judge. We human beings have, have to deal with pain and suffering in this world as a result of the evil deeds, the evil work that we have done. Because of our guilt, the wrong we have done. Yet God has punished us less 
than what we deserve. Because of his grace, his love, and his mercy that he chose, he chose to give us. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 3, verse 25 states, God gave him as a sacrifice to pay for sins. So he forgives the sins of those who have faith in his blood. God did all of that to prove that he is fair. Because of his mercy, he did not punish people for the sins they have committed before Jesus died for them. God gave Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, the Lamb of God, to die for our sins. So God, who is Jesus Christ, took all the pain, the suffering, and sin of human beings on himself so that each and every one of us Human beings can have an opportunity to make it to heaven, to have eternal life with him, where we won't go through any pain or suffering ever again. That's a good God. That's a righteous God. That's the God I serve, Jesus Christ. That's the God I serve, Jesus Christ. And who, who those of you who are Christian, who are a Christian like me, that's the God we serve. The God who died for us. The God who left his heavenly throne so that everyone, every human being can have the opportunity to make it to heaven. That's a good God. That's a righteous God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's look at Psalms chapter 103, verse 10 to 12. He does not treat us as our sin deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. God loves us so much, he don't treat us as that we deserve to be treated based upon our sins. He, his love is so great for us, but though his love is so great for those who honor him, those who choose him, Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. He removed our sins as far as to, from the east as from the west. Now you have to understand that there are consequences of our sins, the sins that we commit in this earthly body on this earth. And we do go with deal, deal with curses, uh, curses that comes with those sins. But as Christians, those sins that we could, we do, and we do need to confess and repent of those sins, and cover them with the blood of Jesus, let them be destroyed, and, and with the blood of Jesus, we can be cleansed from all unrighteousness. But those sins that we commit won't damn us to hell, to the lake of fire, the second death. And we are, and, and, and Jesus removed those those that's that sin of the, dealing with the second death, going to hell, he removed that far from us. As far as the, the, the east is from the west, he removed our transgressions from us. When we want to experience, we as Christians want to experience hell, the second death. We want to experience it because we are saved through our righteousness come through Jesus Christ. It's not of ourselves that we're saved. Our righteousness to come through Jesus Christ. We depend on his blood, his grace, his mercy, his love. And out of our love for Jesus Christ, we try our best not to sin. So we don't foolishly go out and sin and, and live a, a, a reckless life and do whatever we want to do. Because we're Christian. No, it's actually the opposite. Because of our love and our honor for Jesus Christ, our God, we try our best not to sin. And when we do sin, we feel sorry for it. And we confess and we repent. And we ask Jesus to cleanse us from all of unrighteousness. We acknowledge our sins. We acknowledge our shortcomings. We acknowledge that we need Jesus Christ. And we ask him to help us. Help us to get it right. Help us to get it right. As Christians, we're not perfect. When there's no perfect human being. There's no perfect human being that exists on this earth. Jesus Christ, who is God, is the only one who walked perfectly upon this earth. Because he is God and he came in human form to die and be, to be the Lamb of God for us. 
so he can take on our pain and suffering and the punishment that we deserve so we can make it to heaven. So I, you have to understand that's the difference between us committing, us committing sin and dealing with the consequences of human beings committing sins and dealing with the consequences of eternal fire, hell, and then going to the lake of fire, and us who committed sins as Christians, we committed sins, and our people committed sins who uh, and deal with the curses that come with sin. See, this this scripture is uh, Psalms one hundred and three verses ten to twelve. This is not it is not it does not mean that there's no curses that don't, that that we are uh, uh, when we commit sins as Christians that we are able to escape the curses that come with those uh, sin. We can see if we can read and study the word of God for yourself and see the consequence of disobeying God's word and not humble ourselves as a country, as an individual, as a church. And God tells us what's going to happen when we commit certain sins. He's like, if you commit this sin, this will happen. And we see this happen all around us. We see it happen in our country. We see the, the, the consequences for uh, uh, taking innocent lives like abortion, being legal, and killing innocent babies. We see the consequences in this country as a result of that. We see the consequences for sins like gambling, how it hurts family. We see the consequences of people being a, uh, using the, 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 uh, drugs, being dependent on drugs instead of on Jesus Christ. We see the hurt and pain and the suffering that comes with that. We see the consequences of people being uh, having immoral, uh, immoral acts like uh, raping someone. Or, 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 or a, a man being with a man, or a woman being with a woman, homosexuality. We see the consequences of that, of those sins, happen to individual people, happen to different uh, uh, places, locations that promotes and, 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 uh, those type of uh, uh, promotes and encourage those type of sinful behavior. We see the consequences. All you have to do is read the word of God. And compared to what's happening in your environment, in your home, in your in your neighborhood, in your family, and your that your your church body or uh, your country, and you see we're still dealing with those consequences as human beings because it's important, still important for us to confess and repent of our sins, confess those sins, turn our back on those sins, ask God to help us not to engage in those sinful behavior, ask God to change the hearts of our leaders. So they wouldn't make sick, would they wouldn't uh, enforce laws that goes against God's word. Pray for our country and our leaders. Luke chapter six verse thirty six says, "Be merciful, just as your father is merciful." God expect us to be merciful. That's how we obtain mercy. We we what we want to receive mercy from God. We should demonstrate on other people and to other people. Show them mercy. When they do us wrong, show them mercy. Be quick to forgive. James chapter 2 verse 13 says, There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy of others, to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. God expects us to be merciful. As a matter of fact, he said, You need to be merciful to others. Or, if you're not merciful to other gods, I'm not going to show you mercy either. I'm going to treat you just like you treated them. If you won't show the person who did you wrong, or people who do you wrong mercy, God said, I'm not going to show you mercy. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. So let us boldly, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Then we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. If we want to be able to go boldly before God, boldly before his heavenly throne, so we, uh, so we can receive that mercy, we need to confess and repent our sins. We need to show other mercies, show other mercy, so we can receive mercy and we can find his grace to help us in our time of need. Because we're going to need it um, in, this, in this world, on this earth, we're going to need as much grace and mercy as we can receive. 
So it's important for you to sh confess and repent of your sins and show other mercy. Michael chapter 6 verse 8 states, No, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. God tells us exactly what we need to do. He said we need to do what is right, love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Be humble. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 says, Bless, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Be merciful to others. Be quick to forgive those who do you wrong. If you're struggling in those areas, ask God to help you. Say, so God, I choose to show them mercy. I choose to forgive them. Help me, Lord God, to show them compassion and love. Help me, Lord God, to show them mercy because this is what I choose to do. Yes, they did me wrong and what they said. Yes, they did me wrong and what they did. And I'm going to leave that and give that to you, Lord God, and let you deal with it because I choose to show them mercy. I choose to forgive. And if you sincerely pray, pray in that prayer and you mean in your heart, God is going to hear your cry and he's going to answer and respond. And he's going to help you. He will help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, let's take time now to go before God and ask God to show us mercy. So those who, those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to give your life to Christ, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I confess I've sinned and come short of your glory. Please, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Please, Jesus, forgive me of my, of my sins, of, of the sins of my ancestors as well. I'm so sorry. I recognize I've sinned and come short of your glory. Jesus, I need you. I want you. I choose you as my Lord and Savior. Please, Jesus, use your blood to cleanse me from my own unrighteousness. Help me in my walk with you, Lord God. Help me stay on the path of righteousness all the days of my life. Help me live a life pleasing to you and to do your work and your will. Thank you, Jesus, for answering my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for giving my sins and cleansing me from my own unrighteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you say that prayer with me, you mean in your heart, well, welcome to the kingdom of God. You are a Christian. Continue to grow in him. Read the Holy Bible. Read the Holy Bible. You may contact me, Pastor Katina Isley, at www.blessingsinbreakthroughs.com. If you want to learn more or just share your testimony with me or you want prayer, contact me. God bless you.